Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Lori Wimmer, running for State Representative, District 36. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Well, I've been a progressive advocate in the Oregon legislative process for very close to 30 years now, advocating for the people on progressive issues such as women's rights, family leave, health care access, public education funding, corporate tax reform, and a variety of other issues. And I am running because the catastrophic leadership in DC has just reminded us that good leadership is needed now more than ever. And when I entered the race, I was most concerned about the income inequality gap that has made us the state with the leading number of students who are unhoused. Uh, but uh, since the coronavirus has hit, I have seen that it has shed a bright light on our pre-existing problems of poverty and uh, the concerns of our most vulnerable. And I wanted to bring my experience to lawmaking because I know that now is the time that we don't need beginners in the state. We need to have people who know how to get the job done. And uh, my record has shown that I am that person. Thank you. What challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, we have a structural deficit in the way we collect revenues to serve our most vulnerable and to provide public education and the other things that uh, Oregon state government does. And that is to say that because we're an income-based revenue system, when people are hurting and out of work as they are now, one in eight workers has already lost his job, uh, the revenues of the state of Oregon decline at the very moment that the needs rise. And that's fairly unsustainable. The news is not all bad, however, and this is where I think my experience is particularly useful because I have worked through two recessions in the 2000s, and I know exactly what's coming and how best to cope with it. Uh, we have fortunately been working very hard to fully capitalize not one but two rainy day funds. We have the Education Stability Fund and the General Purpose Rainy Day Fund, both of which may be accessed in a fiscal emergency. And I think we will be at the place where uh, our economic emergency will rival that of our healthcare emergency. And we can make choices to either cut budgets uh, that, uh, and services for those who need us most, or to tap those reserves and also put a pause on tax breaks for the wealthy and corporations that are profitable. Uh, because in the past, what we've done is we've made cuts to those programs. We've not had rainy day reserves or haven't used them. And we've continued to allow the affluent to collect tax breaks at the same time we're cutting programs. That's unsustainable as well. I know what programs those are, and I'm ready to make sure that we do it in a way that aligns with the citizens' values mm -hmm. and common sense. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? You know, not in every state have we seen uh, a good way of going about this. And I know that other states have a significant problem with single party gerrymandering. Oregon has not had the crisis that other states have had. And while ours may not be a perfect process, it is reflective of our uh, representative democracy in that those who are in elected positions all across this state have the opportunity to provide the input needed to do this redistricting work. And uh, so in the last redistricting process, again, I was there, I was in Salem, we did not have a huge problem. And we, even though we had a split uh, legislature, we were able to get to a resolution. 
And one of the fail safes that we have in our current system is a Secretary of State who is, after all, the Chief Elections Officer of the State of Oregon, who is able to tie break and make sure that our population's voice is preserved. And that's really important because the proposal that I know the League supports with respect to a commission process uh, has its values. And, and I appreciate the attempts that are being made, but I do worry about our youngest voters, our uh, people of color, our people in poverty, not having equal access to such a structure. And so I think that though there's no perfect system, the one we have in place uh, is uh, the preferable one. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not and why? I believe that the Oregon legislature did an amazing job trying to thread the needle on its cap and invest proposals both in 2019 and 2020 with all kinds of consideration given to uh, helping workers whose industries might uh, go away having just transitions as well as rural, vote, rural uh, Oregonians having the opportunity to have some protections. We, I thought it was a great balancing act. I thought it was the least we could do. Oregon must do its part. But I would go farther. I would say that in addition to cap and invest, and we must pass that in 2021, uh, but in addition, we must think about the uh, great intersectional ideals of the Green New Deal and all of the implications on other aspects of our environment that we all, that also beg for our attention. This is not an, a nice to have, this is a must have uh, priority for Oregon. Well, we have just a, a little less than a minute left and one more question. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? I've been very active in stopping that effort. Uh, the OMA and healthcare uh, clinics and organizations, as well as certain corporate uh, entities, have uh, opportunistically moved forward to ask the legislature to suspend the collection of this Student Success Act uh, corporate activities tax. We think that that's very ill-advised, and we agree with uh, Representative Barbara Smith Warner and Representative uh, Dan Rayfield, who the former being the co-chair of the Joint Committee on Student Success, which created the Student Success Act, and the latter being co-chair of Ways and Means. They both say it's not necessary that the way the cap was structured, uh, only those that are still profitable, think Amazon, will be uh, coming forward to pay that tax on time. In any case, those whose businesses have been put on pause or worse aren't subject to the tax anyway. A delay is nothing more than opportunism. Thank and it you. will hurt kids all over the state. Thank you very much. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.